All right, let's go to jihad. All right. All right, again, this is a sensitive topic, but the way that we can package it and dissect it and present it makes it quite easy. This is one of the easiest topics. Means any topic, by the way, is, alhamdulillah, it's easy. It's invited to a campus, IIT, by the way, in downtown, right? And the topic was, the MSA, they gave me the topic. You know, Dr. Sabil, come and uh, talk to us about the common misconceptions people have. But I was late, right? I was like nine minutes late for the presentation. As soon as I came, I came to the stage, I grabbed the mic and I said, you know, I really apologize, I'm late. The reason I'm late is because I was doing jihad. And they crack up, right? And they think, really, where is your sword, man? Where is your gun? What jihad were you doing? I mentioned to them that fighting Chicago traffic was my jihad for that day, all right? So what I do is, I mention to them these important points of jihad. First and foremost, I define to them that when we exert our best effort to please the creator, that is jihad. That means you're struggling and striving and putting, please the creator and establish wholesome societies. That is the definition of jihad. Then I give them four examples. Example number one is, so these are all four S's, right? S, 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 S. So the very first S is self-improvement. Easy? Over there you can mention some examples. That suppose if the person is like not a good student, right? He or she is getting like C grades because it's too much on the gadget or just not paying attention. But now the person says, you know, now the student says, you know what? It's important for me to excel in this subject because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants me to be the best. That's the example of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Now he thinks and now he says that, you know what? Let me get an A plus grade and not just limited to C grade. So the struggle the person has to go through from here to come here, I say to that person, to Abdullah, you know Abdullah, that is your jihad, may Allah help you in that. If you are taking care of our parents, that is jihad. If you struggle in the morning to get up and do the Fajr prayer, we are doing jihad. When we are going out to help a poor person with our money, with our you know, cherished resources, we are doing jihad. So any personal struggle that we have, we say that is jihad. Second example I gave is, the second S is helping the society. Suppose if you go for a, donate your blood, right? Blood drive, donate your clothes, uh, canned food. So to improve the society, so society improvement is the second category of jihad. If there is a walk, a marathon, to raise awareness against gun violence, against poverty, uh, education for autism, for example. We say that these are the ways that we Muslims enhance the society, and that is also one category of jihad. The third category would be self-defense. Suppose if some enemy comes, some bad guys comes and knock at your door, and now you fear that something bad may happen to you. It is your God-given right to pick up your cricket bat, your baseball bat, and defend yourself and call the police and push the alarm. So to defend yourself, defend myself, defend the country, we say that is also one of the ways of jihad. But over here you have to add something more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Bukhara, Surah number two, ayah number 190. The translation is this, that fight in the cause of Allah for those who fight against you. But do not go to extreme because Allah does not love the extremist. So it's important for us to say, it is a God-given right. If somebody is imposing the war, you have the God-given right to pick up arms to defend yourself. But even in the defensive struggle, you're not supposed to go to extreme because Allah does not love the extremist. And now the question comes in in their mind, what does it mean not to go to extreme? And then I mention some of the etiquettes of a defensive war in Islam. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa after one of his battles, he saw a woman dead. He called his companions and he told them that even in a war, do not kill women and children. Means no non-combatant should be touched 
harm or kill, and that's how careful we are supposed to be. There is no Hiroshima Nagasaki in Islam. There is no such thing as carpet bombing in Islam. That's how careful we are supposed to be. We cannot uh, touch and destroy the places of worship. We cannot uh, chop down the trees. We cannot kill the animals, even of the civilian population. We cannot damage the water resources, the electrical resources. And then if the enemy says peace, if they incline towards peace, the Quran says, you also incline towards peace. And that is, even in a just war, the etiquette that Islam wants us to live by. Right? So that is the defensive part. Now saving lives, if there is oppression going on, some people by somebody else, now you go there as a good hearted people, with the law enforcement perhaps, and you remove the oppression and save lives. That is the fourth example of jihad, which is mentioned in Surah 4, ayah number 75. So these are the four S's, right? Self-improvement, society improvement, self-defense, and saving lives. People may equate jihad with terrorism, right? So what I say to them is that this is what terrorism is. Force convergence, honor killing, oppression of the minorities, killing of the innocent, destruction of humanity, suicide bombing, and the list goes on and on. But then I compare terrorism next to jihad. There you go. This is all terrorism and jihad forbids every single one of them. And this is the evidence from the Quran and from the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So then they may be asking, right? Hey, what about those people who are doing it in the name of God, in the name of jihad, in the name? Again, we can say exactly the same thing. We don't want to blame Christianity for what KKK has done, what the Crusades have been done the slave traders, the Spanish Inquisition, the genocide of the Native Americans. In the name of Christianity, every single atrocity was done. We don't blame Christianity, we blame them. In the same way, if any misguided person in the name of jihad, if they are doing suicide bombing or oppressing minorities, forcefully converting them, mistreating women, we blame them, but we don't blame Islam or jihad. You know, this is what Karen Armstrong said, by the way. Terrorism has nothing to do with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa any more than crusades had anything to do with Jesus. So then you summarize and say, jihad is a noble term that means you are struggling to make yourself better and the society better in the eyes of the creator. 